Hello everybody, so today's video about Unity's NCD component system is going to be very important. In fact, I'll go as far as to say your job depends on it. That's right, we're talking about job dependencies in Unity's NCD component system, which is of course part of their data-oriented technology stack. So as per usual, we're going to be going over what job dependencies are, kind of give you an idea about what Unity does by default, because by default what Unity does is actually pretty good, but there are some circumstances where we may need to actually override that. So we're going to start diving into, you know, some of the situations where you might need to actually override what Unity does by default. And then of course, I'm going to be doing a little tutorial section of this video to show you how to actually use these job dependencies in Unity ECS. So anyways, let's start off with a little overview about what job dependencies are and why we need them. So in Unity ECS, of course, we're going to be using the job system which allows us to easily write multi-threaded code so typically the way things work is we have one thread designated as the main thread and then that's going to schedule work across these worker threads now these worker threads um, can run work basically in the background or even in parallel with other different threads so it makes it much more efficient especially um, on multi-core cpus now one of the issues with multi-threaded code is when we're writing code that is executed across different cpu cores and threads the data from one CPU core can't talk to data from another CPU core and doesn't exactly know, you know the completion status of it. Now, job dependencies basically give us a way to ensure that a job has been fully completed. Now, this is really important because let's say we have one data component that one system and or job is writing to and then another system or job is reading from. So we need to actually ensure that that first system that's writing to that bit of data um, has actually completed its work before we read from it because we could end up in what's known as a race condition where you know maybe if we're trying to read some data before it was actually been written to that's obviously not the intended use case of our program and furthermore because there is some slight variation in you know how fast these cpu cores can actually process data you know we could actually end up in a situation where maybe sometimes the data is read before it's written to and sometimes the data is read after it's written to so it can be pretty difficult to debug in that case because a lot of times the results aren't exactly consistent. So basically the solution that Unity has came up with to deal with this is something known as job dependencies, where we basically have this type known as a job handle and then we can use that job handle to you know, work with these dependencies really easily. We can combine them if we need to, and we can also ensure completion. Now, when we schedule jobs in Unity, it actually returns a job handle to us, and we can just use that job handle object to actually pass into other jobs that are going to be scheduled later on. And then that means that you know one job is dependent on a previous job. And that was just kind of like a little high level overview about the C Sharp job system and job dependencies. I did do a few videos a little while back, kind of going a little bit deeper into the C Sharp job system and how job dependencies work. So I would recommend checking out those videos if you are interested in them. Of course, we'll leave some links up in the cards as well as in the description below. So anyways, today's video is going to have a major caveat on it and that is basically do not take anything that I'm doing in this video as far as code goes as a best practice or some way that you actually kind of should implement this behavior you know there's a thousand ways that are much more efficient and better practice to actually implement the you know basically end goal of this behavior that we're going for the reason I have things structured this way is just because it's a nice, simple way for me to, you know, clearly demonstrate how these job dependencies work in Unity's entity component system. Just know that the main point of this video is working with these job dependencies. Once you kind of understand that, you know, you can see how the, these up job dependencies apply to much bigger and more complex projects. All right. So with that being said, let me give you a quick overview about how the code is structured in this. So we're going to start off by taking in input from the player. So you see that I start off by doing this just in the on update function of this player input system here. Basically, by default, we're just going to set a movement of 2.5 just so the ships are basically always just kind of moving straight forward. However, if we actually are pressing down the forward key, we're going to up that to a value of five. And then you'll see if we're pressing, say, the left or right rotation keys, we're just going to set these to a value of 50 in either direction. And then basically, we're going to do an entities dot for each, looking for everything with a player input data. So in this case, basically every single ship in the world is going to have one of these player input data components. And then we're just going to set this new input data that we've calculated to the whatever current value is. And then finally, we're just going to schedule this job here. So it's not going to be ran on the main thread and executed immediately. 
um, but it's actually just going to be scheduled. So we actually need systems that are going to be reading input from this that are gonna be happening later on in the frame. So the first system that's going to be reading from this here is the rotation system. So basically the rotation system is going to be rotating the ship left or right based off of whatever the player has inputted. Now we're having the rotation system run first because what we want to happen is we want basically our ship to calculate its rotation first and then we want to move it forward based off of that new rotation rather than moving it forward and then updating its rotation after that. Now the way we have to do this is a little bit interesting. Again, one of the reasons why is just because I want to show off how job dependencies work in ECS. But basically, we're actually going to be calculating a new local to world, which is going to represent that new rotation. Now, just basically the way that Unity ECS works is when we set the rotation data component of an entity, it's not actually going to immediately apply that rotation to the entity right away. You know, not only because we're scheduling the job, there is a system later on in the frame that, you know, uses the rotation, translation, and scale components to calculate the local to world components. Now, if you watch my video on um, translations and how they work in Unity ECS, you know that the local to world component is basically the you know actual positional rotational and scale values for an entity in the game world so what that means is if we want to know what the rotation is going to be after we rotate it we have to create a new one of these local to world components and then we're going to pass that over to our translation system so it can basically move forward. You see that in here, I've called it the movement system. We're actually going to access this. It's called the ship local to world. It's that native array of local to worlds. And then we're just going to the index of the entity. And then we can do a dot forward on that local to world, which basically gives us the forward direction of that new rotation. And then from there, we can assign the translation based off of that. After that, we just kind of have a check distance system. So we see, you know, when we're close to, um, you know, one of these targets on the screen, if we are, you know, within a certain range of it, then it's just going to move the target to another random position on the screen. So we can kind of keep playing our little game here. And then finally, I have this color system, which basically is going to color the ships based off of the direction that they're facing in regards to the target. So the more that they turn towards the target, the more green that they're going to turn and then if they're facing away from the target they're going to be a little bit more of a red color so now that that lengthy code explanation is over hope it wasn't too confusing i'm going to talk a little bit about job dependencies now so basically what unity does by default is going to work for you probably 90 percent of the time to be honest with you unless you're doing anything crazy and you probably know what you're doing then you're going to have to manage your dependencies on your own now basically built into every single system is a dependency property now this dependency property can basically just be accessed by just typing in the dependency with a capital D. And this dependency property is kind of like a smart auto dependency. Basically, it's automatically going to um, include any dependencies for any of these components that we're going to be accessing within our job here. So you see, in this case, for the rotation system, we're looking um, to get read only access to the player input data. Now it knows because we're actually scheduling the player input system beforehand, which has write access to the player input data. This auto dependency knows that the previous input job needs to complete before we actually start trying to schedule this rotation job. Now you'll notice that this is just a pretty much a bare bones entities dot for each function. We're not, you know, manually setting any dependencies or things like that, but I can show you basically what unity does by default under the hood. So it's actually going to set dependencies dependencies equal to this entities dot for each. Now you see when I do this, we get all kinds of warnings here. And that's because if we're assigning a dependency, we actually have to manually pass in the dependency into the schedule function here. Now this is only going to work with schedule and schedule parallel. This is not going to work with run because run is just going to immediately execute the job on the main thread right then and there. So again, this is basically what Unity does by default for us. So we actually do not need to have this stuff in there. However, here's the one kind of main gotcha that Unity does not uh, basically account for. And it's when we use native arrays. So we're writing to this native array in this one job up here. And then we're going to be reading from this native array in this job down here. Now you'll see that this job doesn't have any component dependencies 
on the rotation job because we're only reading from the player input data and the rotation job is only reading from the player input data as well. That means by default, this job does not depend on the completion of the other job because both of these two systems can be reading from the same bit of data so long as the data is not being changed. However, the movement job does need to depend on the rotation job because of this native array right here. So how are we actually going to do that? Well, we need to actually manually set the dependency. So how do we actually do that? Well, the first thing to note is that the dependency property is a protected property of the system base class. So that means that we can't actually access the dependency property of a system from another system. So what we can do though, is just create our own job handle property that we'll go ahead and set on our own. So in this case, I've created a public job handle called the rotation handle. So this is a public getter and it has a private setter. So meaning that we can access this dependency from outside of the system. Now we'll go down to our entities.foreach function. And it's really just as simple as setting the rotation handle equal to entities. And again, we have to pass in a dependency into the schedule here. And all we need to do is just type in the default dependency here. Now, one important thing that we need to do when we're setting this is we actually need to set the dependency property equal to the combination of the existing dependency property and that new job handle that we've just created. So we can just do that by setting dependency equal to job handle dot combined dependencies. And we can just pass in the existing dependency as well as the rotation handle. Now, the reason that we need to do this is just because uh, Unity does some things behind the scenes and we just need to make sure that um, all the dependencies are set up properly. Now inside the movement system, we basically just need to access that dependency and then set that as a dependency for the system here. So we'll just do a var rotation handle, set this equal to world dot get or create system with the type of rotation system. So this basically just gives us access to any of the public properties or functions on that system class. And then of course we just need the rotation handle. Now, using this rotation handle, we can just pass that into the schedule method of the entities.foreach function here. And then finally, we just need to make sure that we're actually updating the built-in automatic dependency property. So then we'll just say dependency equals our entities.foreach. Now, coming back to Unity, you'll see that we hit the play button and you'll see that we can just kind of move around on the screen. Of course, we can turn in different directions or move faster in the forward direction if we want to. And then we can kind of rotate around and then we pick up this first sphere here you'll see that the uh, you know second sphere, basically these just will uh, keep showing up in random locations kind of all around this little uh, plane that I have here. So that's kind of the major things that it comes to when we're dealing with dependencies manually. The other thing that I wanted to point out is just how to actually complete these dependencies. Now what it means when we complete a dependency is when we schedule a job, the work that is being completed in that job, it's not going to be completed until some other portion of the code, you know, needs it to be completed or we explicitly tell it to be completed. Now there's a couple ways that we can do that. We can just use the again built in dependency property and just do a dependency dot complete you know we can do this with any job handle type it's just called the job handle dot complete also there is a complete dependency built into the system base class that we can call which basically does the exact same thing and then you'll see also in this case when I have used an entity command buffer, we need to ensure completion of the entity command buffer before the steps in the entity command buffer are actually played back later on in the frame. So we can either do this by completing the dependency immediately, which we've done right here, which will force the completion of any jobs that this system depends on, as well as this actual job itself. Or we could also go to our end simulation entity command buffer system do a dot add job handle for producer, passing in the dependency here. Basically, this is probably a better way to take care of it when we are looking at entity command buffers. That's because we're not, you know, immediately executing and scheduling the job, but it basically just adds the proper dependencies for when the entity command buffer is played back. Go check out the video that I did on entity command buffers if you want a little bit more context on that. So anyways, with that being said, that's going to bring us to the end of today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed it and you found it helpful. I know this one was maybe a little bit more confusing, uh, but again, by default, most of the time, the built-in dependency is going to give you the majority of what you need. However, if your project starts to get a little bit more complex and you want to start to do things a little bit more manually, then you're gonna have to start worrying about job dependencies. So if you ever start to see some errors about job dependencies, you know, don't worry, just start to consider about, you know, what has access to what and what might need to be dependent 
on what other jobs. So with that being said, I do hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and the data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.